Welcome to online worship at Centenary United Methodist Church. We're glad you chose to be with us wherever you are. May you experience the presence of the risen Christ. God bless you. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome and grace and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is so good to be with you here this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements this morning. If you can't tell, this is the first Sunday in Advent. So a very happy Advent season uh, to all of you as we prepare for this Christmas and the coming of Christ. Uh, I'd invite you, if you're a visitor and um, you'd like to receive some of our information that comes out each week as far as uh, our Friday greetings and some of our info that's happening in the church, if you would, uh, there's a visitor card right in front of you. I'd invite you to fill that out. On the reverse side of that visitor card, there is uh, also a prayer request card. If you have a prayer request, please do take the time to fill that out and as the offering plates are passed later this morning. Uh, um, you can just put them in that. Uh, a couple of other announcements. Our charge conference is this coming Wednesday, and that'll be at 6 p.m. right here. Uh, for those who are interested in, uh, in the environment, in our earthly duties and stewardship, uh, we are going to have a creation care meeting this Tuesday in the Chadwick room at 530 if you're interested in those type of endeavors and how we can be more responsible as a church when it comes to our environment, uh, we invite you to come and be a part of that conversation with us. Uh, and finally, uh, Messiah Performance is going to be next Monday afternoon and evening. I believe the first performance, which is a practice, is at 3 o'clock, and then the evening performance is at 7.30. We hope you will come out and be a part of that. Uh, last but not least, there's uh, no youth group tonight. That's the only thing on our calendar for this evening. Uh, and because of Thanksgiving, we will be um, waiting until next week for that. Go to prayer with me if you would. When, O oh God, will the day of peace come? When will the nations stream to your holy mountain and beat their swords into plowshares? When will the long night of war and hatred Give way to the dawn of love, righteousness, and joy. We are ready for the dawn, O oh God. Shine your light into our world, mighty one of peace. Illuminate the path and give us the wisdom and the courage to follow your light. We pray in the name of the Prince of Peace. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Please stand as you're able and join me for our responsive greeting found either in the bulletin or on the screen behind me. The time is coming when the Lord shall pour his most special blessing on all the earth. Be vigilant. Keep your hearts, minds, and spirit open to God's word. Come, let us celebrate God's love for us. As we remain standing, singing hymn number 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. I invite you to join me in our blessing of the Advent wreath. This is a responsive reading. Christ came to bring us salvation and has promised to come again. Let us pray that we may always be ready to welcome him. That the keeping of Advent may open our hearts to God's love. That the light of Christ may penetrate the darkness of sin. That this wreath may constantly remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ. That the Christmas season may fill us with peace and joy as we strive to follow the example of Jesus. Pray with me. Loving God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. 
Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. I invite the Hunter family to come at this time to light our first Advent candle. so much. At this time, we invite the children to come forward for Miss Sarah to share a moment of, of this uh, morning's children's sermon. Just what I was going to ask. What do we do for, to prepare for Christmas? Yeah, we'll decorate with the ribbons. And we have all of our, our decorations. Do you guys have your trees yet? Yes? I do. You do not? But it'll happen. What else do we do to prepare for Christmas? Nice, yep. Um, do we uh, write Christmas cards? Do we bake Christmas goodies? Do we get gifts? Yeah. 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 And so all these things happen, and, and we're getting ready. We're preparing for Christmas, right? Um, and today's lesson is about a different type of preparation. It comes from Matthew 24, 36, and we're going to talk about it a little bit when we leave. Um, but in this verse, we are told to prepare um, because Christ will come again. And so we need to keep in mind all the things that we need to do for, to prepare for, for him returning. And so Matthew says in the Bible, no one knows the hour of his return, not even the angels who announce 
Christ whose birth we know when he will come again. So what are some things that we might want to do to prepare for Christ coming back? It's a big question, right? Maybe read our Bible. Is that the last thing we might want to do? And maybe be nice and loving. Yeah? So we'll talk about some more ideas when we leave. Will you guys join me in a quick prayer? Yeah? Dear Father, we love the season of the year, and we love the preparation for the celebration of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Help us also remember that he is coming again, and that you have told us to be prepared. In Jesus' name.
invite you to join me as you're able for our prayer for illumination. Draw us close, Holy Spirit, as the scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed. Let the word of faith be on our lips and in our hearts, and let all other words slip away. May there be one voice we hear today, the voice of truth and grace. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading today is from the 13th chapter of Romans, the 11th through the 14th verses. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep? For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Now we'll have the reading of the gospel and stand if you are able. Our gospel today is taken from Matthew 24, verses 36 through 44. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be welcome and pleasing to your sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So I know that many folks that are a part of this congregation have been involved in scouts over the years. Can I just see by a show of hands who has participated in some way, capacity, whether it is as a participant, as a leader, as a volunteer, or a parent of a scout? Just by hands. Raise them high. My goodness. I think that's over half the room. I'm pretty sure it is. Wow. Scouts, by and large, usually seem to develop into productive, thoughtful, courteous, and helpful individuals. It gives me and it gives a lot of others in this congregation a lot of warmth 
in our hearts and souls that this church is so active and supportive of our scouts as part of our church outreach and ministry, an opportunity for us to create a warm, welcoming space. I enjoyed being in the scouts when I was young, and then, like many teenagers, both then and now, I found myself completely overwhelmed between school, marching band, work, playing sports, trying to date in there somewhere, uh, and being very involved in my youth group. I felt then, like I often feel now, so much to do in so little time. Anybody else feeling any of that right now? Amen. <laughs> Scouts share a motto. Does anybody know what that motto is? Say it loud and proud one more time. Be prepared. Be prepared. You guys have done this before. This means that when you set out on a wilderness expedition, that you're ready for a multitude of things. You're ready for a rattlesnake bite, a sprained ankle, mountain sickness, poison ivy, wet, cold weather, a lacerated arm, the sudden appearance of a grizzly bear or mountain lion, or in the words of Lord Robert Baden Powell, the founder of the Boy Scouts, you're prepared for any old thing. That's why a good scout is always going to have a first aid kit at the ready, as well as a pocket knife, rain gear, flashlight, map, compass, matches, water bottle, sun protection, food, and extra clothes to prepare for a variety of contingencies. But readiness can appear, uh, apply to other situations as well. What if there's a medical crisis in the house? Is a first aid qu uh, kit quickly available? Are emergency phone numbers nearby? Is the home protected by a security system? Are the fire extinguishers working? Are smoke alarms installed? Do we have flashlights? And the question in my house, are there batteries that are working in those flashlights? <laughs> what about those high anxiety moments that occur while we're driving? Your light turns green and you begin to go and a, another car plows through a red light and you have to stop, slam on brakes. When we're driving, perhaps we wonder, is the spare tire inflated? Where's that jack? Are all the pieces for the jack in its place? Does the vehicle, do we keep a can of aerosol compressed air in it, uh, flares, and a tool kit that has screwdrivers, pliers, WD-40, and of course duct tape? What good self-respecting person wouldn't have duct tape? As we ponder these things and think about who we are as followers of the Son of Man, ponder this. Are we in a state of readiness? Are you prepared for Christ? Our friends who have property and pieces of land and houses down at the beach are particularly good at getting windows boarded up when a storm, a uh, hurricane's on the way. They don't start boarding up when the winds reach 74 miles an hour, no. They prepare, sometimes several days in advance. But during hurricane season, they're always on the ready. Noah didn't wait until it started raining to begin to build the ark and gather animals. One might say that readiness is being prepared for any possible contingencies. But let's have a look at what some others have said in history about being prepared. Abraham Lincoln said, if I had eight hours to, to chop down a tree, I'd spend six hours sharpening my axe. Stephen King said, there's no harm in hoping for the best as long as you're prepared for the worst. Benjamin Franklin, this one's fairly familiar. By failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. And for this Christian congregation, Ezra Taft Benson said, it's easier to prepare and prevent than it is to repair and repent. 
Being in a constant state of readiness might mean boosting up uh, preventive maintenance, or constant state of readiness, rather. This applies to our body and our health, but it also includes things in our community, things like the infrastructure, the upkeep of machinery and roads. When a bridge collapsed a couple of years back, like one did in my old stomping grounds in Pittsburgh, there's usually one reason, neglect. The Flint water crisis can be attributed in part to poor maintenance and inspections that never happen. When a dam bursts, someone didn't see the warning signs. How many communities are not in a state of readiness in the event of a school shooting or a tornado touching down or a gas line rupturing? These are scary. These are disasters. And we don't want to refer to the coming of Christ in terms of a disaster. Yet, since we're at the height of the beginning of the holiday season, the tension is no doubt rising in some of our lives. You're back on the blood pressure meds. You're popping those hot, happy pills to keep even kill. You have places to go. You have people to see. You have presents to buy. You have tacky Christmas sweaters to make. You have family and friends coming to town and folks you're going to visit. Jesus puts it this way. In Matthew, he says, For as in those days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. We must confess that on many levels, our disaster preparation is disastrous. And our asset management can be abysmal. It's the same this year as it was last. Not always so good. The coming of Jesus as a baby or the coming of Christ as the Lord of glory is a blessed event. But it may be frightening if we're not prepared, if we're not eager for the arrival of our Savior. Quick story, it rained for several days and the waters around the town began to rise. They reached the porch. The man said, I'm going to be okay. It started to go into the house and he climbed up the stairs. And the water kept climbing. He went to his attic and the water got in there. Finally, he made it to the edge of the roof of his house. And as the water was rising, he looked out and saw a canoe coming by. And the folks in the canoe said, come on, hop in. We can take you to safety. He said, no, I'm okay. He said, I have faith and the Lord will watch over me. The water kept rising. He climbed a little bit higher up onto the roof, up to the pitch. As the water rose and rose, another boat came by. This time, it was a fishing boat. And the folks in the boat said, come on, get in, get to safety. He said, I'm a man of faith. My God's got this. I'm okay. Go save others. Finally, the water kept going until he found himself on the chimney. And that's when, out of the west, a helicopter comes in. They drop down a line, and you can hear him over the intercom saying, Come on, get in. You're going to die. No, I won't. My God is going to save me. They pleaded a couple of more times to no avail and took off. The waters covered everything. The waters rose above the chimney and the man drowned. After arriving in heaven, he met God face to face and he looked in bewilderment and said, Lord, I don't understand. The waters continue to rise higher and higher. And I waited for you to save me, but you didn't. Why? Then the Lord looked and said, What are you talking about? I sent you two boats and a helicopter. <laughs> so why don't we get prepared? Why don't we get ready? One expert explains that people don't prepare for emergencies because they believe that everything is going to be fine. Or they believe it won't happen to me. The odds of disaster are so small. Some believe that if they do prepare, they'll jinx the whole thing. 
<clears throat> Some say the government will save me. It won't. Someone else has prepped enough for the both of us. I don't have enough room. I don't have enough time. People will think I'm crazy. I refuse to give in to fear and paranoia. I'm too old. And last, just like the man from our story, my faith will save me. Everyone in this room can identify with at least one, if not most, of, of these excuses or reasons. They range from unreasonable optimism to disbelief, denial, doubt, fear, and a hope and a prayer. Worst case scenario, someone will rescue me. Jesus seems to say just the opposite. Then two will be in a field. One will be taken, one will be left. The women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, one will be left. Our text today is the carpe diem of the New Testament. Seize the day. Stay awake. Be prepared. We have a moment to lose. People, get ready. Jesus explicitly tells us that he doesn't know when the Son of Man will come back. Being ready wouldn't be a problem if we knew the time, the day that Jesus would come back. Then we could do our thing, and then just before Jesus' imminent return, we'll sober up to Christ's ways. One writer put it this way, here, as is always the case, God reveals enough about the future to give us hope, but not so much that we do not have to live and walk by faith day after day. Now, some of you might be into some of the eschatological strategies that rely heavily on apocalyptic messages in the Bible, such as in the books of Daniel, Thessalonians, and of course in the book of Revelation. It's fun and games, or it can be. But listen to the words of Jesus one more time. About that day and hour, no one knows. Who knows when the Lord is coming back? No one. The Bible tells us that the wise store up choice food and olive oil, but the full gulps down theirs. We read in the book of Thessalonians, Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. And finally, in 1 Corinthians, Paul shares the words, Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Be strong. Jesus' words here are preparatory to the main point. Be ready. Keep alert. And again, in verse 44, he tells us, reminds us, be ready. He says it over and over. Be ready. Be ready to welcome the presence of Jesus in the Spirit. Be ready to be a servant of God. Be ready to live as we're supposed to live, offering love, grace, and peace to all that we encounter. To avoid, to avoid the things that separate us or may disconnect us from God. We need less blood sport and less divisive cable news taking a large chunk of our lives. We need more connection. We need other Christians in our midst that we can learn from and rely on and who can do the same with us. We need sobriety of our minds when it comes to dealing with complicated issues with others. We need to learn to relinquish control from ourselves as we learn to put our trust more in God. We must, we must be ready to act in the interests of all of the dominion of God, for all of God's kingdom. A person who lives in a state of readiness is the type of person who looks for opportunities to glorify God. This person lives in anticipation of learning opportunities and of teachable moments but one who is also aware of the dangers along the way. He or she pays attention to the possible pitfalls or potential dangers. 
and they look for the opportunities daily, as often as possible, to share Christ's love. They're cautious people. They're watchful people. They see caution signs around them that say, mind your head or watch your feet. We don't know much about how Jesus will show up in a cloud of glory or show up literally holding the world in the palm of his hands. And as we gaze up, he looks down, smiles upon all he's created and loves all. But we can be prepared for the moment when Jesus wants us to show up in his name, in our lives and in the lives of people around us. In his name, we love. In his name, we serve. We offer generosity. We show loving kindness. In short, we live as though Christ has already come again and living through us, around us, and in us. For indeed, Jesus is. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our hymn number 202, People Look East. Our altar is always available for those who may be in the need of prayer, and we invite you there if you would like. Let us unite and join together in the historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven. Sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. Please be seated. We move into our time of joys, celebrations, and concerns. Uh, it is a joy to be in the house of the Lord this first Sunday in Advent as we do enter that time of preparation for the coming of Christ. 
Are there other celebrations this morning or joys to be shared? Doug. Congratulations. Are there other joys? Other joys. Gail, would you come up and share from the microphone this morning? Just come up here because I'm not sure if that one's on still. Good morning. I'm a happy lady and I've come to share my happiness with you. As most of you know, for the last several years, Centenary has donated a brand new book to each student at Oaks Road Academy. Well, we did that again this year. And I need to thank an awful lot of people. I have some retired teacher friends who go to First Presbyterian Church. They gave me a hundred books from the Presbyterian Church, where I thought was just wonderful. I've had my friends and your friends that don't go to this church give books for Oaks Road. And then I've had Centenary. And I've always kind of worried, but it's gonna be okay, Gail. Enough books are gonna show up. Well, they showed up this year. And I wanted to share with you the number 985 books were donated to Oaks Road Academy. So thank you all so much and your friends and people that just gave. And it's been a wonderful mission for Centenary and thank you. Let's show Gail some appreciation for all she does. As we go to share our uh, concerns and prayer requests, uh, prayers for Pastor Ann and Ann, uh, Pastor Van and Anne Marie as they travel today, and also uh, prayers for uh, the family of uh, Billy Owen, who is uh, Pastor Van's aunt. Uh, she passed away over the weekend, so we lift them up. Do we have other concerns or prayer requests to be shared this morning? It is a happy day. I didn't see you, George. Share. Right. Uh, today marks 46 years of marriage with Susan and me. Congratulations. Do we have other uh, concerns to share? We are grateful for, for all of you who put in so much time and effort, not just to the music ministry program, uh, but to so many things here at Centenary. We are very... Charlie. Thank you. And we lift up your, your beautiful bride this morning as she's feeling a little under the weather and pray for her quick recovery as well. Are there others? Let's go to the Lord for a time of prayer. Loving God, Lord of all that is, you bless our lives every day. And we sometimes forget that all these blessings come from you. And we overlook them or decide that we just deserve all the wonderful things that come our way. It seems that each year, the push for the commercial holiday expectations comes stronger and earlier each year. By the time we approach the true holy day, we're exhausted. 
it's hard to gather the strength. So make us ready, Lord. Slow us down and help us find release from the demands. Help us learn to praise you. Enable us to make decisions that will build hope and community rather than foster greed and selfishness. Help us reach out to others with gifts of kindness and peace. Enter our hearts, not with demands, but with a gentle reminder of the peace that you do bring. For we ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, let us offer ourselves for God and our gifts for the ministry of Jesus Christ.
Let us greet one another with outward signs of peace, grace, and love. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our closing hymn is on page 206. Please remain standing as you're able as we sing, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. All the corners of the world, God is bringing God's blessing. Be ready, watch, for the time is near, salvation is at hand. Be at peace in the arms and love of God. Amen.
Thank you for joining us in worship today at Centenary United Methodist Church. If you'd like to know more about Centenary, go to www.centenarychurch.com. If you'd like to speak to me or another staff member, you can reach us at 252-637-4181. Or if you'd like to visit us, come to 309 New Street in beautiful Newburn, North Carolina. God bless you, and remember, God loves you.